Welcome to this demo of R20 Converter. In this demo, we are going to export a Roll20 uh, campaign. Uh, in this instance, it's Curse of Trot, a campaign I bought on Roll20. Um, but it can work on any campaign you have, whether it's homebrew or not. And you can see this one is full of different pages. Some of them are archived, some are not. There's a lot of chat as well. Um, journal entries, characters, um, all sorts of things, including music, etc. Um, the first thing we will need is to have a button here to export our game. So the way we do that is by going to github.com slash kakaroto slash r20 can exporter. You will find the link in the description below. Um, you can read through the README. Uh, there's a, an important disclaimer to read here. And then to install, visit Chrome Web Store. This only works on Chrome, not on um, Firefox, uh, because of technical limitations. Once you install it, you can reload the page so that you can have your um, export buttons get it added here. So what we can do is either to export our campaign to a JSON file, which will be read relatively fast and small, or export them to a zip file. So if we do a export to JSON, we will end up with a, um, in, th in this instance, considering the chat log I have and all that, uh, it's about fi uh, 50 megabytes, um, a relatively small file. Um, otherwise it's about 1.5 gigabytes. Um, so I've launched Foundry VTT. You can see here, I just installed the DND 5e system. Otherwise I have no worlds. It's a completely new installation. And if I right click and browse user data, so you see Curse of Straw, JSON has already finished downloading. And we can also try to export campaign to zip. So the difference is that the JSON only contains your campaign content uh, while the zip file will also contain all of the assets used in it. So all the token, all the artwork that is used within the campaign itself. Um, so that's the difference between the two. All right, so um, now we need to convert our campaign. We'll let it run in the background, but for now we can go to patreon.com slash kakaroto and you can click on R20 Converter here, for example, and you get access to the uh, latest version uh, from right there. Um, I have this version right here. So let's start by extracting it, extracting the, the Windows version. There will be a Mac and a uh, Linux version as well. And then we can either open the readme file, uh, which explains how it works, and um, or we can just directly go ahead and open the R20 converter executable. Uh, we are greeted with this uh, new user interface and that asks us for the exported file. So I have the Curse of Strahd um, as the zip file, the JSON. I also have Lost Mine of Fendelver uh, right here. So let's go ahead and convert um, Curse of Strahd. So we select, it detects it as being a zip file. Next, it will ask me uh, where is my um, Foundry VTT installation directory. This would be the one that you get when you do browse user data. Um, this is the path right here. It will automatically detect the right one. You can decide to either export it as a compendium or as a world. And you can give it a, um, a name um, a different title, or you can leave it all as default. Um, a description, you can set the password, uh, the access key for the GM and the players, and then next. That's it. You are done with all the hard questions, uh, but there are many, many um, ways to fine tune all the settings, such as uh, force the token bar one to be set to the HP, enable fog of war, regardless of the roll 20 settings, restrict movements from all the walls, um, automatically detect doors from walls based on the color. Uh, you can also 
export folder contents as loot items. So for example, in, uh, well, it's currently generating the zip file. Um, uh, but for example, you have magic items as a folder in the journal in Roll20, it will automatically create those as uh, items. And if you have like caverns uh, with a lot of walls, you can specify a minimum wall length. So any small segments will be merged together uh, as long as the angle between them is not above this value. Uh, but you can um, leave that all as a default. There's also some advanced um, uh, options here, but let's ignore all that and just start with the conversion. So we are converting Curse of Strahd, so it's creating all the handouts. You can pause this and just look at what's happening, right? So creating all the characters as well. Then it's doing our um, scenes. So you can see, for example, here, it's detecting in the Abbey of St. Markovia, um, 121 lines uh, were of this color, which would be green, and seven lines were red. So red is going to be chosen as uh, the color for doors. It's also going to improve, especially if we look at um, something like the werewolf uh, den, you'll see that it's uh, here. It, it decreased the walls from 881 to 549. Uh, which is uh, significant. So once it's done creating all the scenes, it will also copy all the playlists, the role tables, and then it's done. Conversion completed. Make sure to install the FVTT modules permission viewer and furnace. Um, and then it says things like, um, you can double check all the data. Uh, if you're using the forge for hosting, um, you can import the generated world using the import wizard from the forge uh, but that's it uh, it's done we can exit and then if we launch foundry vtt now you see curse of Strahd was added here uh, and you can see in the data there's this curse of Strahd directory that was added so let's let's launch that world and see what happens have some music playing. Let's stop that music. There you go. Uh, so there we have our landing page that was here. We have Barovia. We have um, all our maps with all the details. This one was uh, homebrewed. Um, so that's we, we recover all the chat as well including the little um, hover from Roll20. Um, we have all our scenes. They all got imported. Uh, our actors, so the monsters, you can see all the details are there. Um, <coughs> sorry, all the spells. Our player characters as well have been uh, copied over with all of their data. And magic items, um, those are the magic items from the journal folder. So if you look at the magic items here, the journal folder from uh, Roll20, it got copied and created as uh, items. And we have our various decks of cards as well. Um, and uh, of course we have our uh, our journals, um, they're all there, linking to the right places. Everything is exactly as you left it in Roll20, as well as the links between all of the chapters, all of the um, content. Um, the decks are rollable tables as well, and uh, you have your music. Um, and everything is just perfect. And that's how you convert your Roll20 game 
into a Foundry VTT uh, game. So let's have a quick look, for example, here at our um, at one of the maps. You can see the walls here uh, have been set properly everywhere. Um, so you have here a door that is in the wrong place. This is because on Roll20, we open doors by moving them away. So we need to fix that. Now we have an actual door that can be opened in Foundry um, right there. Um, these should have been windows, um, not doors. But you can just select them and just change to um, uh, movement restriction, but no perception uh, restriction because there they are windows and remove the door attribute. Now they are walls um, that act as windows. Um, what else? We have the werewolf then, which is an interesting one. Uh, where is it? There it is. So you can see the werewolf then here has all the walls and they are much nicer than the one from Roll20 because we've merged, uh, as you saw, it was supposed to be 850, then it became 550. So we merged some of these walls into something that is better. We can also go to the lighting layer and you can see we have all our light sources here um, where they should be and um, it's perfect. We can see the tokens here that are on the GM layer um, hidden and yes the, the, this is uh, this is how it works with, uh, with the map. Um, there are some improvements that we can do such as uh, selecting all of these walls and changing them to um, to be uh, terrain walls. So a perception of limited makes them a terrain wall. So you can have, for example, uh, your um, your token see the the element. But as you can see, it's not great because they weren't very well done in Roll Twenty themselves. Like this one is just a cross instead of being round. Um, that's Roll Twenty limitations. Um, and that's the main reason why you need to go back and fix some of the stuff. Uh, like for example, here we can see three doors. It should really be one, but because Roll20 had a sort of handle um, here, just so we can grab it, um, that causes that issue. But now this is better. Um, that's about it. You have your lights. You have, oh, we can see here, those are drawings um, that were on the map, um, right? So uh, the drawings are there as well, uh, copied just the way they were on Roll20. Uh, the, the walls, the lighting, the drawings, the music, the journals, the actors, the chat, everything. Um, the only problem is that you will have uh, macros while they will be working for some of them um, like these will work but the templates from world will will simply not work um, and that's about it the zip file here is downloaded so um, there you go to get roll 20 converter you go to patreon.com slash kakaroto and uh, you can download it from there. Uh, you need to be on the $5 tier to get it. Um, it only works for D&D 5e games. If you have like Pathfinder or another game system, it will still work just fine, but your characters will be broken. So the character sheet will not work um, because R20 Converter supports the shape sheet and D&D 5e by Roll20. Um, so that's about it, I think, for all the disclaimers and all the information. If you have any questions, you can go to my Patreon and join the, my Discord, uh, where you can ask all your questions. Thank you.